I would like to invite Lori Webb and Luke Stempion from the Lambton Heritage Museum. Um, Lori Webb is the supervisor and curator of the Lambton Heritage Museum, and Luke Stempion is the assistant curator. So thank you very much. My apologies. Uh, thanks, Simon. Um, as Simon mentioned, uh, my name is Laurie Webb. I'm the supervisor curator at Lambton Heritage Museum. Um, Lambton Heritage Museum is located in Grand Bend, and we are um, the county's uh, museum. So we cover everything from Grand Bend right down to the little tiny town called Shetland, and from Sarnia right over to um, another small town called Watford. And it's a fairly large county. Um, so you can see here, here on our map, we're located at the northern tip of the county, which poses some logistical challenges for us. <laughs> um, um, but it is a big county. It takes us about two hours to drive from Grand Bend down to the south end of the county. Um, and it takes about an hour to drive east to west across the county as well. So Lambton Heritage Museum um, opened in 1978 um, and is owned and operated by the county of Lambton. We have approximately 14,000 visitors per year. Um, and we have 50,000 square feet um, that has over 25,000 artifacts and 10,000 photographs depicting the history of the entire county. Um, the museum currently has myself as a supervisor curator, uh, three full-time staff members, and four part-time staff members. Um, and we're also located on a 30-acre um, wooded natural oak savanna site as well. So we have a large site that we maintain. The site has um, several historic buildings out back, which you can see pictured here. Um, we ha have two agricultural buildings out back as well, um, and then a large main exhibit space as well. And you can see on the uh, map there where our collection storage is located. Um, it's a fairly large space, um, but that um, area also includes our curatorial workspace as well. In addition to the County Museum at, at uh, Grand Bend that I oversee, I also oversee the County Archives in Wyoming, Ontario, um, and the Oil Museum of Canada, which is located in Oil Springs. Um, so our plan is to help use this project to help reorganize those spaces as well, because both of those sites are additionally um, in need of some serious help with their storage areas. Um, so when we get done this program, we're going to start rolling it out to those two sites as well as our partner site, um, the Somber Museum, which is in um, the south end of the county as well. The museum um, was founded by two local collectors. Um, the county, he, they donated their collections to the county of Lambton in the mid-70s. Um, Fred Walden had a collection of thousands of artifacts um, and that he donated to the museum. And um, Peter Eisenbach owned and operated a small museum in Grand Bend, um, which all that material came to Lambton Heritage Museum as well. From both of those collections, we have um, some really fantastic material and some really mediocre material. <laughs> Um, Fred Walden was a collector of vast quantities of things. You can get an idea here where you can see his, you know, a small portion of his teacups that he had. Um, we have a, the largest press glass collection in the country. Um, we have a huge collection of Courier and Ives prints that came from him, a large collection of native artifacts, um, and there's a wide variety in um, the quality of the artifacts that came from both of those collections. And um, I'm going to turn over to Luke now, and he um, did the condition report for the museum um, and did most of the work surrounding that. So he's going to talk about, about our condition report and what we've discovered um, going through the process with Reorg. Uh, so for the Reorg uh, report, because the museum has... Oh, okay. Oh, sorry, I'm too tall. Um, <laughs> uh, so for the Reorg uh, project, uh, because the museum has a number of uh, collection spaces, which you'll see later, we have two agricultural barns. Uh, and collections uh, stored in a lot of spaces, we sort of had to narrow the scope of our project. So we looked at about 7,500 artifacts are part of uh, the reorg project for us. Uh, and they constitute uh, mainly uh, mixed social history objects. Uh, but interestingly enough, as we sort of started going and looked more in depth uh, at our collection, uh, we uh, found that maybe about 40% uh, was also archival uh, documents and books as well as photographic. 
um, as an agriculture, or sorry, as a museum in an agricultural um, county, uh, about 10% um, are, especially stored in our agricultural barns, are uh, large, uh, heavy industrial agricultural uh, implements. And so these are two photos here uh, that represent our two main focus points for the reorg project, uh, archival storage and uh, artifact storage. Uh, so we, um, as part of going through the uh, project, which I think is sort of a really interesting question uh, that comes out into Reorg, it's what would you save if there was a fire um, in your building? Uh, and I think uh, certainly for Laurie and I, who are relatively new uh, curators and assistant curators um, for the collection, it sort of allowed us to sort of focus of, of all the things. And as Laurie mentioned, Fred Walden was a collector of things in general, uh, and everything was equally important to him. Uh, this has sort of ha helped us look at our mandate and go maybe what is the most important for the museum. Uh, so the museum holds a large archival and document collection uh, from uh, many of the towns in Lambton County, and it's specifically strong in Grand Bend, uh, where the museum is located, as well as for the uh, city of Sarnia and the town of Petrolia. Uh, it, the museum holds a lot of unique uh, textile works, um, as well as locally designed and manufactured agricultural equipment uh, from a lot of small-scale or small-scale Ontario manufacturing towns, and we're really fortunate there to often have the uh, equipment, as well as some of the business records and plans uh, and history behind those shops. Uh, we also have some fantastic collections from uh, local families uh, who, uh, again, were sort of able to leave everything from, you know, uh, family uh, dresses and textiles to business records to objects that came out of their shops. Uh, and we're really fortunate to be able to hold both the sort of um, tangible uh, heritage as well as the document textile record for that as well. Uh, so this sort of uh, shows an outline of our main uh, exhibit uh, and collection center. Uh, so this would be the uh, museum building that visitors uh, enter into. And so the two projects that we're looking, or the two sites that we're looking here are artif artifact storage uh, in bright yellow and then archival storage, which is located right next to it. Uh, archival storage at one point was uh, exhibition space, which has been converted. We also have temporary storage, which is just down uh, from there. It's um, sort of always fresh in our minds, but not part of the actual reorg uh, project for us. And then next to it is the operations hallway that we've sort of spilled out uh, into. Uh, so these are just a few photos to sort of get you uh, acclimatized to the space. This is our artifact uh, storage area. Um, and it just sort of captures some of the sort of views. Uh, we'll look at like a sort of site plan uh, in a moment. Uh, archival storage, uh, same sort of thing. This was designed to um, just be uh, textile, or sorry, text uh, documents, uh, but it sort of overflowed as the um, collection has expanded. I have furniture now stacked on top. Uh, of our galleries is sort of the history of uh, Lambton County, so a lot of our sort of key artifacts there. And this is out uh, in our agricultural barns. There are mixed exhibit space and storage space as well. Uh, this is a photo of the uh, museum exterior. Uh, so the uh, front, back of the building, as well as the two large agricultural barns. Uh, again, uh, just a quick picture of our floor plan. So this just sort of orientates you to where we are um, in the building. And so this is our storage uh, before uh, reorganization. Uh, so you can see here um, on this side, archival storage, and on the right, artifact storage. And one of the things that we've noticed actually is we need a little bit more space. Uh, for artifact storage and to be able to get away from that sort of strict uh, division is something that we're looking at. Uh, so through the reorg uh, project, we started mapping what exactly was on the floor. Uh, so this light gray space sort of shows inaccessible um, space that we weren't able to get down to. So you can see, especially in artifact storage, we're not able to access a lot of the uh, shelving, metal shelving units uh, in there. You just simply can't get to them. And then uh, through the back of artifact storage, uh, we start getting into you know just things cluttering up the aisleways. This is really uh, helpful. We uh, went through and color coded what was supposed to be in here and what wasn't. Uh, so green is uh, collections, red is non collections, um, blue ended up being some exhibit uh, supplies, and as well we coded um, programming supplies that it sort of drifted into the space as well. Um, so these are some uh, photographs of our storage space uh, in uh, artifact uh, storage, and they sort of highlight some problems that we've been able to identify through the reorg methodology. Uh, so on the side closest to me here, you can see foam core uh, stored in what should be collection storage area. Uh, on the shot in the middle, you can see uh, sort of furniture that's cluttered up our aisleway and made it inaccessible. All the material on both of those shelves would be really difficult to get at without moving a large um, bed as well as uh, it looks like acrylic uh, cases that are stored there. And this is on the first shot is something that's kind of interesting uh, for us was certainly when we filled, when we did the um, reorg uh, um, 
uh, the scoring methodology for reorg, one of the things I think we both said was that there was zero space on the shelf. Um, you, there's a possible six points, and we said we were zero. Um, but when we started doing the condition report, we found in a lot of cases um, there was space on the shelf. We just weren't using it to its sort of fullest capacity. Uh, and I think the reason that we thought that was because we were storing things on the floor. Surely, if we were to the point of storing things on the floor, there wouldn't be any room on the shelves. Um, so again, this is uh, our archival storage area, uh, and you can see a sort of a lot of blank space, and that just kind of comes down to the way that we're trying to sort material in archival storage, which is by um, county location. So if you're in Brigden, all the there's a Brigden shelf, and there might not be a full Brigden shelf, but that's what the shelf is for, and so we're kind of creating extra uh, space there. Uh, this is uh, artifact storage, and so another um, problem that we ended up finding was that we didn't have a lot of space in our collections area to be able to lay things out, to be able to take things off the shelf, take a quick look at them. Uh, and as you can see here um, on our right-hand side, that's because we have a chair and have a life pres preserver on them. Um, <laughs> uh, as well as sort of, again, clutter uh, into the aisleways. So this was our reorg uh, storage self-evaluation. Um, the museum scares uh, scored uh, fairly uh, low, uh, but we do sort of like this as a sort of tracking tool, and sort of each year we sort of plan to reapply uh, the self-evaluation and uh, hopefully be able to document uh, progress as uh, we move through, and I think it also gives us a chance to score other spaces within the museum and see how they fare. Uh, this is our uh, reorg team uh, at the museum, so we're quite fortunate to have a number of uh, staff members that can work on it, and Lori was able to uh, budget a little bit more uh, part-time hours, which I think uh, should be really uh, helpful uh, here as well. Uh, so through the condition report, uh, we came up with a number of uh, numbers. So one of the things that Reorg looks at is the idea of trying to get uh, floor occup occupation space to around 50%, so we were doing quite well uh, there. Uh, unit fullness, again, was really interesting. Like we said, we said we had no, no uh, space on the shelf, um, but by doing the sort of um, uh, math around that, we were able to see that actually we do have uh, quite a little bit of space. Something that came out um, for us was that we were over our room height usage in one of our rooms because we have these sort of un um, impractically large shelving units that are 12 feet tall. Uh, we have no way to really access the stuff on the top, uh, so we tried to set a base limit for how tall we wanted uh, things to go in. Um, and one of the things that was really sort of um, kind of frightening in a way, uh, was that it took us um, only 63% of objects uh, that we um, were looking for in the collections we were able to access within 20 minutes. So we randomly took a sample size from our card, ca card catalogs of 20 objects, uh, and of those pulled, uh, only 60% uh, we could find uh, within that allotted time period. Uh, so the condition report uh, um, pulled out a lot of uh, issues uh, for us, and then from that we were able to look at uh, main issues, which I'll just briefly explore here. So one of our main issues that we face for our collections is an estimated 10 years uh, collections back backlog. So that was what was in that one hallway. Uh, and we've got to the point where all that material is at least now grouped in two primary spaces, which allows us to sort of physically see it. Uh, and I hope to be able to start um, processing some of that material. Previously to that, it was scattered throughout the museum. Um, the majority of archival documents, books and photographs are also uncatalogued. Um, and this is despite um, when we sort of looked at, you know, what are the things that we would save in a fire? Those were some of the things that we'd really want to save. Um, and so that's also something that's sort of come out of uh, the condition report. So in the um, simple things like the cluttered aisles uh, has really increased the amount of time that we need to get to an object, even if it's, um, even if you know it's back there and you can see it, if you still have to move four or five objects with a team of, you know, two people, um, you're not able to grab that object as fast. And uh, artifacts are inconsistently documented and cataloged, um, <laughs> sort of to say the least, uh, and uh, often lack uh, updated historical information on their location and movement. We're still using a uh, text uh, card uh, system uh, for this work, and so that's something that we're hoping to uh, potentially change. But usually, um, the location is helpfully noted as storage. Um, <laughs> um, so, no. Okay. Um, so, there's just a, another uh, photo of our collection storage with clutter. I'll hand it back to you. So part of Reorg, we also identify building issues. Um, we've come across a few. Water pipes um, run above our collection storage area to the heating um, control systems that are there. Our HVAC system is out of date. Um, we're currently upgrading that, though. We're in year three of a five-year upgrade to that. Um, and we don't have good tracking of um, repairs that have been done to the building in the past. Um, 
so we're not quite sure exactly what the state of the building is um, because the corporate memory that was there from the 30-year employees that have now retired has gone out the door with them and we have no idea when the roof was last replaced or that type of thing. Um, do you want me to just do this? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Um, we also had to look at our furniture and equipment, so we've discovered that our archival material is all mixed together, it's not good, there's no free workspace in our collection storage kit, and we don't have a proper emergency response plan or kit in place. Um, and then Luke touched on our management issues too, we don't have any, um, our policies are out of date, we have um, inconsistent policies between what we collect and what we should collect according to our mandate. Um, and there's no single person clearly responsible for who's in charge of the collection. It, touches on it on both of our job descriptions, but doesn't give the authority to either of us particularly. Um, and then we came up with some urgent issues. Um, so removing the unaccessioned items from the collection storage space, um, repurposing the storage equipment, um, and establishing one trained staff member who's in charge, um, implementing a new electronic catalog system, um, which would greatly help us being able to find objects, and um, determining locations for every object. As Luke mentioned, generally it would say storage or general store exhibit, which doesn't exist anymore. So, um, those are the types of issues we would run into. And then also our fire detection system and suppression systems are out of date, and we don't actually have any fire suppression systems per se. Um, so we're looking at changing our shelving um, to compact mobile shelving in the one side, um, and leaving some of the existing shelving in, in place as well um, for this phase. And then in subsequent years, we're going to be looking at um, redoing some of the other parts of the storage areas as well. So that's it.